In the second reading we hear, their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. Their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. When I was in the seminary, a classmate and friend of mine, now Father Christian Rabb, uh, was a person that I became good friends with right away. After you spend six years with someone, you're either good friends or mortal enemies. So we became good friends. And before he was Father Christian Rabb, or Brother Christian Rabb at the time, he was a monk of St. Minard, and before he became a monk, he was Daniel Rabb. Daniel Rabb was a person who was big as a musician in the Chicago bar scene. He would play and was well known throughout the, the bars in Chicago as being a person who could draw a good crowd and play a lot of good music, etc. He spent many nights out late doing the Chicago bar scene. Beer, cigarettes, all those fun things. Like Thomas Merton, if you're familiar with his story, Daniel Rabb experienced a conversion at some point in his life and decided to go from the bars of Chicago to the monastery in the middle of nowhere in southern Indiana, St. Minard. In one of the last years that we were together in the seminary, in fact, it was the final year that we were together, we all took a class, and it was a class on poetry where we looked at the poetry of the Bible. Most of the time when we, we hear the, like a fourth translation of the Bible and a lot of the beauty of the poetry that was originally written is lost because it's been translated so many times. So the, the class was to get us to appreciate that in fact there was actually a lot of beauty in the writings of the Bible, at least in its original language. So we all took turns writing poetry and sharing it with the class. And I believe I've shared a couple of mine uh, from that experience. But I wanted to share a poem from Father Christian Rabb about his experience. And it's a beautiful one, and I think it has a lot to do with Lent and those who are occupied with earthly things and those whose citizenship is in heaven. So in order to set the scene for Father Rabb's short poem, it was, he's writing about some feast day at St. Minerid where the 60 or so monks all gather together for a monk party. And that's the name of the poem, Monk Party. So you can imagine a young, hip, brother Christian Rab surrounded and at a party with people who are 60 or 80 or 90 or 100 years old. In fact, Father Theodore Heck at the time was 104. So here is Father Rab's poem, Monk Party. This little fiesta stinks, if you ask me. No beer, no girls. We stand around a glassware bowl of fruit salad and eat it out of plastic bowls with plastic spoons. No music, no cigarettes to let hang from our lips while we shoot the breeze to pull on and savor while tunes hover and hum. This little soiree has none of that. I'm bored enough now to explore your heart. I'm bored enough now to unfold your mind. As St. Paul said, their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And what Father Christian Rabb was trying to convey, and I think that he did so beautifully, for me I go back to that poem all the time, is that until we strip away everything, our citizenship is in some ways still on earth. And we are drawn to that. We are drawn to the attractions of the world. And we don't want to be citizenship. We don't want to have our citizenship in heaven. We dread that. We're afraid of what it will mean. And so we look for anything else to latch onto, to pretend that we're busy, to pretend that we have things here that have to be done and that supersede 
the call that we hear in the hearts of ourselves, which is the voice of God saying, come away with me. We latch on to anything else that we can find. And I'm as guilty of that as anyone else. I dreaded Ash Wednesday and Lent this year, just like every other year of my life. I dread Lent. And as I wake up on a Monday morning, and I have none of the things that I usually have, my sports radio, my television, my coffee, I have none of those things. I stare at the wall, and I dread that. None of the comforts of earth. I have nowhere else to turn, nowhere else to be distracted, nothing else to pretend it's so important that I can't be with God. No longer occupied with the food that I have to eat, which for some reason occupies my mind a great deal normally. I think I'm spending about six to eight hours thinking about my next meal every day, which is, I think, what St. Paul was getting at when he said, Their God is their stomach. In Lent, my God cannot be my stomach because I deny my stomach and I deny my senses and I deny everything else. And I strip away all those earthly things that normally mark my citizenship here on earth. And yet, every time I do that, every time I fully enter into the season of Lent, every time I renounce those things that I normally cling to so tightly, I enjoy a sense of peace and calm that I know nowhere else I actually get a decent amount of sleep when I'm not wired on caffeine 24 hours a day. I get a decent amount of sleep when I can't pretend that I have to watch the hour show that night at 10 o'clock. Instead, I go to bed, and I'm actually well-rested. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm able to sit in the calm and the stillness and actually be with God. There's a stillness that comes in the season of Lent when we actually enter into it, when we remember where our true citizenship lies, that it lies in heaven and not here on earth. It's an amazing experience when we actually celebrate it, and I'm assuming that even though we know its power and we know its awesomeness, when next year's Lent rolls around, I'll dread it again. I'll be afraid of what's going to happen. I'll be afraid of the pain, of the denying myself things. But I'll remember as well, hopefully, that there is a stillness that God is inviting me to if I will listen and if I will embrace it. St. Paul said their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. Lent is like going to a monk party. There's nothing really fascinating to do there. It's boring. It's old people. Nothing against old people. It's fruit salad. Nothing against fruit salad. It's all those things. And we are finally, we have nowhere else to run. Nowhere else to distract us. Nothing else to distract us. The archdiocese, and in fact priests throughout the world, are mandated to go on a retreat. And I dread that too. I dread it every year. I have nowhere else to run when I'm on retreat. And which is why I probably dread it. We have sign-up sheets, or sign-ups are available. I've worked really hard to offer and have retreats offered for every age group in our parish. Unless you're in fifth grade or younger. Everyone else in the parish has an opportunity to attend a retreat, to go on a thing for 48 hours where you have nowhere else to run. And we have 500 families between my two parishes, and I've had two people sign up. And I understand why. Because it's, it's scary. Lent is scary. Retreats are scary. Having nowhere else to run is scary. But St. Paul is calling us and reminding us and getting us to ask ourselves, 
Are your minds occupied with earthly things, or are you a citizen of heaven? May it be true of us, may we be citizens of heaven. People who long for that heaven, who will be willing to sacrifice and endure pain and suffering in the short term so that we can finally hear the voice of God this day in the moments, in the ways that he's speaking to us. May it be true of us that we are citizens of heaven, that our minds are no longer, at least during this Lent, as occupied with earthly things as they normally are. And not only that, may we help other people come to experience that as well. May we help other people to be citizens of heaven along with us.